Hey, what's going on you guys? Hope you're all doing amazingly well. This is actually the longest video that I have done so far on this channel. It's pretty comprehensive. We are covering sound design for lo-fi style hip hop drums, start to finish, kicks, snares, tops compilation, mixing, mastering them into your own track. So a very long video. If you're into music production topics, hit the like button and subscribe. Check out the chapter selections on the timeline. You can skip around. I think you'll be surprised even if you're a very experienced music producer by some of the tips and ideas that you'll hear in this video. There's a link in the description to the Gumroad store. It's basically just chock full of free stuff that we have been giving away while I've been making these videos. You can check that out. It's basically my gift to you for watching the videos and being a follower to the channel. And yeah, it's a pretty long tutorial. There's a bunch of great stuff in it. I hope you get something out of it. Enjoy. So let's get started with the kick drum. So this is a kick drum sample that comes from a very popular lo-fi drums pack. There's a characteristic to the sound that's very popular. And let's take a listen. So right off the bat, it's a very short kick drum sound. It's also very dark. It's missing a lot of the high frequencies that you'd normally associate with a kick drum used in a rock track. In lo-fi hip hop or chill hop, the kick drum is usually darker. It's more of a guttural, thumpy sort of sound that they're going for. And a lot of times when you're getting stock sounds from your DAW of choice, in this case it's Ableton, the sounds are typically going to be maybe longer in their decay than you might think. When you're auditioning them here, you might be thinking, oh yeah, that's a pretty short kick drum sound, but you'd be surprised. I'm taking the kick 007 sound uh, here from the Ableton uh, Live kind of stock sounds that they give you. Um, and you can see here, without the processing, what it sounds like. So this sort of sounds almost like an 80s kick. And what I'm doing here is I'm taking EQs and I'm taking off the high frequencies. So you can see here, I've actually got two EQs right off the bat that are slightly different in how they're cutting out those frequencies, which is probably one of the main tips I wanna get into right away, which is that you're gonna use EQs maybe in stages. You know, you can't expect one layer of EQ to do everything for you, especially with sound design. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting out the frequencies and darkening it one stage at a time to get the right amount of darkness. Because notice, again, these high cut curves are not straight brick wall edges. It avoids the phasing issues that that can introduce, but it's also gentler. So it's still letting some of those high frequencies through. So I do it in stages to really dial in the sound. So let's take a listen to that in stages. Now the first EQ. Now more filtering off. And then I add this EQ where I'm adding this big bump at around 1100 hertz. This is sort of the knock range. This is where, if you knock on a door, that sort of mid-range sound that it makes. This is where you can find it in a lot of kick drum sounds. I'm just bumping it up so that later on when I compress and saturate the sound, I get a little extra attack that I want in that range. And you can actually hear it with the uh, Pro-Q3 plugin. You can actually isolate these frequencies. It's going to sound very quiet because it's still a very small relative range in volume compared to the rest of the frequencies of the sound, but you can hear it here. So it's very light, it's probably hard to hear, but it's just sort of that knocking range of the mid range of the kick. Okay, so now we get into compression. And with the compressor, what I'm doing is I'm essentially using a slow attack. And this is allowing me to compress the sound and sort of focus the attack. Again, so off. On. And you can see in this plugin, it's kind of cool. You can see the compressor at work. It's just focusing the attack more. And then a big part of the sound again is the shortness. So we're taking away the frequencies, we're compressing it a little bit, and now we're gonna make it a lot shorter. What I typically do is I use LFO tool. Um, it's really neat because you can basically set up your sample in sort of a, a four beat loop like you can see here. And then what I'm doing is I'm using LFO tool to really shape down um, the uh, transient shape of the sound. And what you're gonna notice is there's a lot of decay that we get rid of. This immediately takes away all that ambience, all that decay, and like I said before, a lot of the sounds that you hear that you're auditioning probably need to be shorter to get this sort of sound. 
Sometimes I even use LFO tool um, more than one to really dial in the shape that I need, similar to how I use more than one EQ if necessary to really design the sound the way I want it to. And then finally what we do is add saturation. So the saturation is giving us a little bit of color, it's adding some harmonics back into the sound and it's gluing things together really well. And for this one I'm just using Decapitator by Sound Toys. On. And there you go. You can actually use stock plugins with Ableton. You don't have to use the third party plugins to achieve this. Probably the only catch um, is that you have to go in manually to shape the transient. And you can see actually visually how much of that I have to do uh, to take all that stuff off that's right here. I do it by hand. So I click control four or command four, and then I go into non-grid mode and I can really shape uh, the transient the way I want it to be. I use this automation line to take it off the way I want to hear it. And that really helps, but you have to do it by hand essentially. But the plugins that come with Ableton are great. And you can see here in stages, I'm taking the same approach. I'm using my EQs, cutting away the frequencies in stages, and then I'm using my compressor. And then finally I use the drum bus with zero drive, just setting it to hard. And it gives a great knocking sound to this kick. So let's take a listen to this in stages of processing. Okay, so first the EQs. So it became darker, now we compress it. Now we add the drum bus. And you can see how much the saturation can change the color of the sound at the very end, the way it glues things together, the way it adds harmonics in. And that's a big part of this process as well. Once you have these plugins on your track, you can basically just freeze and then flatten the track. That's what we do in Ableton Live. Um, so you can basically render this out. So now what I have is my sample the way I want it processed. And now I can actually drag and drop this sample into drum bus. Okay, so let's talk about snares. Right here I have a sample of a snare drum taken from a lo-fi sample pack. A very popular type of sound, a very popular type of snare drum used in lo-fi, hip-hop, trip-hop, chill-hop style music. So let's take a listen. Again, this is a very short kind of sound. And what I've done is I've taken samples from the stock sounds given to you in Ableton Live. And the same type of sounds that you'll find in other types of uh, you know, stock sounds that come with other DAWs. And I've recreated that style of sound here. And this is my version. So again, it's a short sound and it contains two main components. The first is that it's a mid-range style snare sound. So not a whole lot of lows, not a whole lot of highs, and I'm actually using a lot of band pass filtering to achieve this effect. The second thing is you're using layers. So there's stages of the snare sound, including most importantly, a flam effect, F-L-A-M, flam. And we're gonna get into what both of those things mean. Right here I have a Snare 808 Tone 1. You can find this again in the Ableton Stock Sounds library. And it's basically like a pure sine wave tone, um, kind of like a drum machine style snare sound. So that's sort of like a pure tone kind of sound. Underneath it I have sort of this snare here. And I'm not doing anything to either one of these sounds. I'm just stacking them on top of each other and I'm using group processing. So you can highlight any one of your tracks, hit control G or command G and make a group or a bus other, uh, like in pro tools, they would call this bus processing. And I'm sending those two things through LFO tool to shorten them and make a short sound. I'm also using EQ with what we call a bandpass filter, uh, in pro Q three, you can go to it. Um, this is called the bandpass shape. They call it bandpass because it's uh, taking away both frequency bands, the low and the high, um, in just one uh, curve. So it's a fairly large cue for that bandpass filter, but because you're taking off the lows and the highs, it's making it much more of a mid-range sound. You can see we're kind of right in the mid-range of the frequencies. But then the next part of the snare sound is the flam effect. A flam for drummers on drum kits means when you hit uh, the snare drum head with the right and the left hand sort of slightly out of time with each other. So you get this sort of uh, doubling effect. And you can see I've got these three samples here on the bottom. 
uh, together that are slightly off uh, from where uh, the principle of the sound is. So we have our stack right here, and then we have these other samples. And I've got different things here. I've got like a clap sound. I've got a rim shot. And I've got some kind of, it's called E perk Mazer blip. <laughs> it's just some, some sound that sounded cool to me. And these three things combined are sort of out of sync with each other as well. And that's creating, uh, in my opinion, a very nice sort of flam effect. And when we combine this with the main part of the snare sound, you just get like a, a thicker, more textured sounding snare. And the great thing about Ableton Live is you can have groups of groups. So here I have the main group of the main part of the snare sound, and then everything itself gets sent to an all group. And here I'm just doing some more processing. So I'm taking off the high end. I'm sending it through drum bus to add a little saturation, which is great at gluing sounds together. And then finally at the very end, I just added a little more bandpass filtering uh, to just make sure I give it a little more of that lo-fi sound. Uh, so just trimming off some more of those frequencies. And that's basically the snare sound. That's how it comes together. Now, another extra thing that I want to go over is how we resample these things down or consolidate it down into uh, one sample. So I can't really freeze these things because everything's being sent to groups. So what you want to do is create a new audio track. Maybe I'll label this snare print. And then what I'm going to do is because I'm sending all of this stuff to a uh, one big group track, I'm able to then bus it or send it to my snare print track. I can arm this for recording Let me just turn off loop and then make sure my playhead is right before it. And then I'll just hit record and it will print it into this audio track. And I wasn't monitoring there, so you couldn't really hear it happening. Uh, but that's basically it. Now everything is consolidated down into this one sample. I can trim this off, get rid of the uh, repetitions of it, and just go in and basically create now my own snare sample that I can then drag and drop into the drum rack and trigger like a sound as I make my beat. And that's how we go about making a snare sound in the lo-fi style. And this is just one type of snare sound. Obviously there's tons of different snare sounds. So much creativity can go into making this style of effect. And you kind of heard mine was very different from the one example that I had here at the beginning, but that's the point. It's all about making something that's unique and original to you. Um, but generally speaking, bandpass filtering and creating a flam effect for more texture in the sound are great ways to kind of get that sound. Okay, so now we're talking about tops. Um, tops is obviously sort of a compilation element. It uses multiple different sounds put together usually into some kind of loop that features syncopation, texture. There's a lot of creativity that can go into these things, obviously. And this is just one example that I pulled from a popular sample pack. Let's take a listen. So obviously the sound has multiple elements in it. What I tend to do is I picked all these sounds uh, in this example from the stock sounds that come with Ableton and I process them, put them together into my own pattern and here's what I came up with. So basically the idea here is that I'm using the drum rack. It's very useful for consolidating elements together when you're creating your MIDI patterns and doing everything primarily through MIDI. You can see I'm using more than one closed hi-hat. Um, that's creating the back and forth element. Everything is basically programmed using the 16th note grid, uh, including a few other rim shots and just other elements that I'm bringing in to create something that sounds right to me using primarily 16th notes. The one moment where I'm not is taking sort of a short, snappy trap hi-hat sound and actually running it through uh, a triplet 16th mode, which you can access by clicking on the MIDI clip, hitting Control-3 or Command-3, and now we're looking at triplet 16ths, and that's happening on the downbeats in these two sections. So that's giving you that sort of trap, fast, hi-hat rattle sound that everyone knows pretty well. So that's basically what you want to focus on. 
And another thing that I want to point out is that when people are using drum rack, they usually don't realize that a lot of these elements matter. For instance, shortening sounds that have long decays or reverbs to them, or going into the control section and transposing, pitch correcting, panning the sound, messing around with the stereo spread, um, and just general elements like that can really go a long way towards changing the sounds and going into detail with what you're using. Everything then gets sent through a bandpass filter, again going for that lo-fi aesthetic where we take off the low and the high bands and doing it to your own personal taste. The glue compressor is really useful for compressing everything together, especially if you're using a lot of velocity changes here in the lower end, which gives it variety but will have a lower gain stage. So I take the glue compressor, bring the threshold all the way down. It's basically just clipping off the snare. And then I use a ton of makeup gain to make it have a more beefier gain staging. So it's just louder. Then I'm using this free plugin through Reactor, which is just like a lo-fi plugin. It's just adding a little bit of texture grit. It's taking some frequencies away. It's making it darker. Um, and then I'm using the groove menu here to change the MIDI that I have in this clip to have some more variety. So everything's being triggered right flush on the grid. If you go to the groove menu, I literally just took the two-step accent 16ths just to add variety to the timing. Because when you're writing these things in by hand, you know, you're, everything's going to trigger right on the dot and it's not going to, it's going to sound more robotic, right? So that's what grooves come in handy for. You just go to your groove menu, drag and drop it onto your track, and it will mess around with the timing of things and make it sound a little more organic. And speaking of organic things, I have a Foley group here. And this is literally just random samples. Sometimes the sound of people in the park or things dropping, or it could be literally anything. Cutting things up, adding fades, messing around with things, just to add variety, texture to that sound. Here you can hear it soloed. It doesn't sound all that special. Mixed into the track, it just adds more syncopation and interest. Finally, we're using group processing as well. So everything gets sent to a master group. I use the cabinet here through Ableton. It makes things a little bit darker. Drum bus, saturation, glues things together. And then, <laughs> surprise, surprise, more bandpass filtering to take lows and highs off. And then I just have this uh, limiter here to make it loud. Again, you can do all of this with stock Ableton plugins and all of the sounds besides the Foley elements I sampled here are coming from the Ableton drum library. So you can create these things yourself. And it's all about being creative at the end of the day. Um, obviously, you can't go into every single pattern or every single syncopation. But seeing the level of detail that you put into these things to make something unique in your own is important. And ultimately, it comes down to the detail you put in and the texture that you want. And again, let's go ahead and consolidate this down. So I'm going to make an audio track. Let me turn on my lo-fi plugin. That's going to add a little noise floor, which we always like. We'll label this Tops Print. We'll send this master group to that track. And this time I'll turn on the monitoring so we can actually hear it being printed in. Arm it for recording. Make sure you bring it kind of behind the track because it's going to actually uh, sometimes print forward. Alright, there we go. Okay, so in this part of the video, we're going to be talking about how do you process these drum sounds once you've created them. And this arrangement in particular is a little bit louder and more aggressive. Let's take a listen. So obviously there's a little more of a rock element to this beat. There's really cool loud sounds and trying to make those drum sounds stick out, especially if you've created them in that lo-fi hip hop context, you're going to be missing a lot of those higher and lower frequencies that we talked about 
in the beginning of the video when we process them. So how do we help those elements stand out? The important thing is to look at group processing and ducking using a compressor. So you can see here I've done some color coding on the right side of the screen, white and black. So the white is the drums, the black is the musical elements. And you can see here that you don't have to necessarily print these things out in audio. All of this stuff could essentially still be running through drum rack, including the kick, the snare, and the tops compilation. But I'm just using audio here because I'm used to doing that style. Now you can see here in the group section, I've created a KS group for the kick and the snare. KS stands for kick snare. And the reason why I do this is because sometimes I want to add a saturator onto those two elements together. It groups them together. It also adds a little distortion, helps them stick out in the mix. The tops is also being grouped together with KS into a drum group. So I'm organizing everything down into these larger parent groups. I'm doing the same thing with the mix elements. I've got piano, wavetable bass, and the synthesizer and reverb element here. All that goes into a music group or music bus, and that has the compressor using sidechain. This is the Pro C2 by Fab Filter. Excellent visual plugin that's actually showing you how the music, the keys, the wavetable bass, the synthesizer are all ducking as a group whenever the kick and snare hit. So we could take a listen and a visual look at that. And obviously you can play around a lot with this idea. You can mess around with the attack, the release, how much auto gain you want to add on or makeup gain you want to add on. And obviously compressors like this have their own uh, different styles of compression you can use and will have their own sort of musical elements or their own sonic elements that you can incorporate into them. But if you were just going to use the stock Ableton compressor that works just fine, I would dial it in here, hit this arrow button, hit sidechain and take the input from the KS group, the kick snare group that we talked about earlier. So that's another reason why we use groups in order to uh, focus those different musical elements into specific paths. So if we want to do a ducking, uh, we can have that follow the KS group. And that's what's going to allow us to help those drum sounds stick out. And then finally, when it comes to mixing a track, there's other things you can consider just in general. Like you can see here on the master bus, I'm using a tape plugin that's set to a mastering uh, preset. This is mastering soft, clean compression. This is the Kramer tape plugin from Waves. Um, just an excellent plugin that adds saturation, it glues the mix together, helps reinforce the bass, and then I'm sort of doing that right before I hit the limiter, and the limiter is just bringing our volume level up. And you can see here, I'm actually doing two limiters. So I don't just limit uh, at one stage, oftentimes I'll limit the bulk of the volume up there. I always make sure my output is set to negative 0.03 to avoid inner sample peaks. And then I add on a second limiter. You can see it's adding 1.5 decibels of gain. So less gain because it's already reached the ceiling. There's no reason why you need to use just one limiter. Um, and you can see that limiter also has 0.03 output level to make sure, or negative 0.03 output level to ensure we don't have inner sample peaks, which is very important. And then what I'll do is I'll turn on the oversampling on here so that that also helps me avoid artifacts once I go to bounce out this track. And that's basically start to finish how you can put together lo-fi drums, sound design them, put them into a track, mix and master them. Please feel free to hit the like button and subscribe if you found this video useful to you, especially if you're into music production topics. And I would definitely recommend checking out the link in the description to the Gumroad store. It's not even really like a store at this point. It's just a bunch of free stuff that I put together during the course of these videos I want to give to you guys for free if you're interested in it so definitely check that out and yeah have fun making music I'll see you next time